The obesity crisis is fueled by feminism. As much as I have my issues with mainstream feminism, when Claire Lehman, Lehman, Claire Lehman, Lehman came out with her theory about how feminism is responsible for the obesity crisis in North America, I knew that things were getting a little out of hand. <laughs> Since then, feminism has continued to be blamed for just about every social ill. So that's why, as much as it pains me to defend the mainstream version of feminism, I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Because I think in order to improve feminism, Lord knows it needs improvement, we need to be precise about what it is that's actually wrong with it. And that does not include the goddamn obesity crisis. Why don't we start with that and set the stage? Claim number one, feminism causes obesity. So some think that because mainstream feminism has been associated with the fat acceptance movement, that it is responsible for increasing rates of obesity. Lehman's theory is not quite that crazy. She thinks that because feminism encouraged women to earn a living rather than stay at home, that meant that there was no one to stay at home and cook for the kids. Enter fast food, enter processed food. Next thing you know, rates of obesity are skyrocketing. It's funny, she mentions fast food, but her analysis never extends to... Oh, I don't know, the fast food companies? You know, the ones actually producing all this food? The ones with the incentive to make us want to buy copious amounts of it? There's no discussion of how capitalist modes of production, to which we can trace back the separation of the private sphere with the working sphere, which created this opportunity cost to staying home and cooking in the first place, might be responsible. There's no discussion of the marketing of junk food, the necessity of two incomes per household for most ordinary people, particularly those with kids. Nope, her analysis doesn't go any deeper than that, it's just feminism. So feminism is the new boogeyman. It's been blamed on a lot more that might sound like it's less ridiculous than the obesity one, but they're all actually just as nonsensical. So I'm going to go ahead and go over them. Claim number two, feminism is responsible for low birth rates. I was at a conference recently and I was talking to someone who was lamenting the fact that feminists had convinced women not to have kids or to delay parenthood and focus on their careers. On the one hand, it's of course good that women have access to reproductive choice and economic opportunity. But apparently women are having fewer kids than they want to, and perhaps even regretting not having kids or regretting waiting to have kids. There's certainly a bit of a tension between having a career and having kids right now, at least for people who aren't wealthy. There's this article which mentions two studies, one of 1800 Americans who didn't want kids and they asked them why. They mentioned the fact that it's expensive, they don't have access to childcare, they mentioned the fact that it would take up too much time, they mentioned economic concerns, and just not having a committed partner to do it with. You'd think conservatives would be happy people weren't having kids outside of wedlock. Another study asked women in the US and Israel freezing their eggs about why they were delaying motherhood. Apparently only two named career concerns as their primary reason, while half said they just hadn't met someone they wanted to have kids with yet. 15% said it was their partner who wasn't ready or willing to have children yet. And yeah, I mean, I don't know why women get the bulk of the blame for this because I don't exactly see young men chomping at the bit to commit and have children early. And that's because economic concerns impact them in a very similar way. So again, I would sooner point to economic concerns than feminism for this phenomenon. I mean, besides all that, there seems to be very little acknowledgement that in a capitalist society such as ours, people derive their meaning from work. They need their own income to be independent and being promoted gives you status. And guess what? Women are a lot more like men than you would think, perhaps. They too want meaningful work. They too want to be financially independent and maybe to gain status by being promoted. If you don't like that, it's not women and certainly not feminists who created this system. As the followers of Claire Lehman and the types of people who read Colette love to remind me, men created society. Basically, human civilization has come from men and particularly white men. men who created industry, men created civilization. Okay, so that's done. Claim number three, feminism is responsible for the Pence effect. Apparently because of Me Too and by extension feminism, men no longer want to hire women, mentor women, promote women, not work with them, which puts a damper on women's success in the workplace. So this has been attributed to the Pence effect, which has been named after US VP Mike Pence, who said he avoids dining alone with any women other than his wife, presumably to avoid even the possibility of some false accusations. So the first I heard of this was an article in Bloomberg which interviewed 30 senior execs in the financial sector who talked about how they were afraid of women now and saw them as a liability. Um, therefore, you know, Me Too and feminism is to blame. Everyone's just sort of bought this. Even feminists who just got even madder at men than they were before. They cited this study. But this study is not comparing men's reluctance to hire women before Me Too and after. 
It asked people how they expected people to react to Me Too, and then a year later, how they actually felt. So this study isn't really showing what everyone's claiming it is. Although it isn't completely implausible that men might be spooked after Me Too to interact with women, I've been looking for actual concrete evidence of this one way or the other, and I haven't found any. So I don't know why everyone's so fucking sure this is a widespread phenomenon just because 30 businessmen said so. When I tried to find something, all I could find was that globally, the share of women in senior roles has been increasing. Make of that what you will. And this report by Grant Thornton found that in 2019, which is the year or so-ish after Me Too, there's been nothing but increases in the proportion of senior roles held by women. So basically, I think this excuse is a huge cop-out. The men who didn't want to work with women before are more or less, with a few exceptions, I'm sure, the same men who don't want to work with women now. And anyone who calls fears of sexual harassment or rape hysterical, but is this paranoid over false accusations from women, can take their double standard and shove it up there. And claim number four, feminism has turned men into soy latte drinking beta males. This has also been floating around on the web. It's probably most popularly been attributed to Jordan Peterson, but many more have talked a lot about how there's this crisis of masculinity, men don't know how to be men anymore, and that this is the fault of feminism. As with previous claims, it's easy to blame feminism, in this case because they've probably heard feminists criticize masculinity and men's behavior a lot. I see a backlash against masculinity and a, and a sense that there's something that there's something toxic about but what, masculinity. What is this idea? Apparently in this case, words have that much power. But if you look at it more in depth, you'll find that a group of women are probably not the culprit. It's greater sociological and economic forces that can be traced back to, I think, capitalism, industrialization, and technological advances. Basically, if men are more sedentary than ever, if all they're doing is playing video games, smoking weed, not cleaning their room, uh, going disproportionately into high paying jobs like programming, instead of going into dying industries like fishing in the oil sands, I don't exactly see a connection between that and feminism. The US ended the draft in 1973, military service is no longer compulsory. In our society, you don't go out and hunt to get your food anymore, you walk your ass to the grocery store. All those things have more to do with why men aren't masculine in the ways that Jordan Peterson wishes, more so than feminism, I would say. And also, if you'll remember, Raymond's feminism led to obesity hypothesis relies on the assumption that women are generally not in the home raising their kids, they're out working. So I wonder, according to them, who exactly is feminizing these boys and by what mechanism? Another example is this panic over men not going to college. Um, although a question definitely worth exploring, the narrative surrounding this really bothers me because if it was women who weren't going to college, the same people freaking out right now, I would've been saying, well, it's their choice. Maybe they're just not suited to it. That's just their preference. So these people can take their bootstraps choice rhetoric and apply it to men if they love it so much. Another partial reason is that men have options for well-paying jobs that don't require going to college. As far as I know, the earnings gap still favors men. Not to mention, everyone's constantly making fun of college and how worthless a degree is, so I don't understand why we're supposed to be sad that men aren't going to this so-called stupid institution to get a so-called stupid, worthless degree. In any case, I don't see the connection to feminism. The shift to more women being in college has more complicated sociological and economic origins. I don't think it can be attributed simply to women's opinions in the form of feminism any more than I think sexism as an amorphous concept is solely responsible for women's current economic position. Rather, I think the reasons are more structural, but that's a topic for another video. Claim number five, feminism is the reason millennials aren't having sex. Suppose this is related to the whole women not having kids thing. People have argued that in the wake of Me Too, men are too scared to approach women. They think they're just not worth the trouble. And others say that feminism has dismantled gender norms, which people used to find hot. I don't know. Others have attributed the great sex recession to millennials living at home with their parents or the fact that they're getting married later. These are better than just it's feminism's fault or this is because of me too, but I think the answers are still more complicated. Again, I think it's more to do with the fact that millennials are extremely alienated from one another. We're all very busy, our work culture hasn't really improved in the past few decades, people go to work, it's not unusual to have an hour commute, they come home, they only have the energy to watch TV, they go to sleep. I know a lot of people who live that way. Because of the way society is organized now, it's harder to sort of spontaneously meet new people. People are also terminally online, watching TV more than ever. They can use social media to get a superficial social connection. 
They don't have to go out to make social bonds. You can't forget the ubiquity of porn. And these factors can all be traced sooner to capitalism, technology, neoliberalism, if you want to call it that, more so than feminism. Besides, millennials are altogether more risk averse. They're also doing drugs and drinking a lot less than younger generations used to. And I haven't seen that traced back to feminism, even though I think those things are all connected. Claim number six, feminism is the reason for the commodification of human interaction. This one comes more from the opposite side of the political spectrum. I've seen a lot of criticisms of feminists for overusing concepts like emotional labor, thereby commodifying affection and human warmth, or for being really technocratic about their domestic life, you know, like meticulously calculating what percentage of chores they do compared to their male partner. So it's true that mainstream feminists are, as much as they like to rail against neoliberalism and claim to dislike it, they are more than happy to commodify everything and quantitatively measure everything, including normal human interaction and domestic life. But again, women didn't start this. Feminists didn't start this. This is just the logical conclusion of capitalism. These feminists, as much as I hate when they do this, are merely continuing a phenomenon that existed long before them. And yes, they should be challenged on this, but it's just that feminism isn't the origin of this behavior. I think that these feminists were merely trying to speak the language that a lot of men and non-feminists understand, which is very pro-empiricism and one where for something to be valued, it has to be quantified numerically and in terms of dollars. So overall, if anyone's blaming feminism for anything, they need to be specific about what kind because feminists themselves hate each other and cannot agree about what's best for women and men. Again, as much as I agree that mainstream feminism requires improvement, blaming it on all this shit is not the answer. Blaming feminism for the obesity crisis and for women not getting hired and all this other stuff is a huge cop-out. just easy to blame a group of women instead of trying to figure out what it is that's actually causing these problems because there's a lot of very powerful people who benefit from keeping these systems in place. If you disagree or agree, comment and tell me what you think.